a very confident and a happy looking individual. You know, you'd think uh, he's won enough uh, uh, battles. He's seen the up and downs of life and politics. Uh, but he has spoken on what he says is important. Now we get the chance uh, to observe it as we have been for the past 10 years. Uh, the phenomenon which is Narendra Modi and, and that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Shivam Shukla of the Bharati Janta Party joining us on the broadcast. Ratan Sharda is with us. Raja Munib is also with us. Uh, Joyta Basu uh, on the broadcast with us as well. I'm expecting Rajavardhan Singh Rathor uh, joining us very, very shortly. Joyta, let me quickly bring you in now. Now, the obvious question is that when Narendra Modi now, 10 years later, is speaking after having won a lot and lost a little, is he or do we still judge him for speaking in terms of political jargon or now do we have to measure him with a different yardstick that he is speaking what he believes, he is speaking from the heart and this is what makes sense to him when he says that look, people want development, people want stability, they don't want division, they want a developed country and they want to see things being implemented and not talked about. Is he just talking because, of course, he's, his party is won today, it's a good time to talk, or do you think he actually believes these things? Well, it is not just that he believes these things, it's the people who believe these things. You know, I mean, the very fact that he's talking about Modi ki guarantee, now when he is talking about that, that itself shows that his name, I mean, if you remember the last uh, election also, 2009, they were, I mean, Niyat uh, hai. you know, the intention is right. Now, what he's talking about today is an extension of that. You know, the thing is that he's, uh, in fact, if you go to the people and you talk to the people, I remember, I mean, even say during the time of the uh, demonetization and certain, or not all decisions have been appreciated by the people, but they've always said maybe he has made some mistakes, but his intentions are right. He wants to work for the people. He wants to actually talk in terms, he's, he's willing to walk the talk in terms of development, in terms of making people's lives better. And this is the best part about him because you see, there is no negativity. If you are looking, you know, contrasting it with the, what the opposition is doing, and that's a huge mistake, I would say, on the part of the opposition. Their whole narrative, it's very negative. You know, it is full of negativity. They're talking about particular industrialists. They're going to talk about a, a particular caste. That, you know, things that are of not immediate relevance to the people. Uh, but here is this gentleman, even after 10 years of being in power, when he is speaking these things, I mean, he not only believes in these things, because when you look at his track record, the kind of stuff that has happened, of course, his opponents will not agree with what I am saying, but okay. it is ultimately the okay. people so, believe. So, 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 so Joyta, the... The reality is, and you know, you and I don't have to be convinced about it. We can see it around us. The highways around us are changing. Uh, I do get a 5G internet speed, which is now shockingly good. Uh, I have gigabit internet in my house. Uh, we do the ground reports where we see the people who've got the houses, who have got the, the gas cylinders. Uh, we've seen the people uh, who, who, you know, got the, uh, uh, you know, whether it's the uh, Swanidhi scheme or they've got the toilets that have been built. We are looking at cent percent. Now, I know in a large country like India, it's difficult to say cent percent. But sometimes it takes something. So when we're talking about a developed India and through our entire lives, we've been a developing country, third world country, sort of hanging in there kind of country. Now we are confidently talking about a developed, developed country where our these are just truisms. Our, our forex reserves are record highs at $600 billion. Steel production, cement production, food production, everything is at record highs. Tax collections, direct, in, indirect, everything at record highs. You are the fastest growing. You will be the third largest economy within a year. These have become truisms. In the middle of all of this, uh, you need someone who needed to grab India by the scruff of its neck and just devote everything to the country. You, you required M.K. Gandhi to do it 80 years ago, 90 years ago. You needed something because, you know, I was just thinking and I was watching this speech. There was a World Cup that happened, uh, Joyta, just, what, a few weeks ago. And there's a photograph of, you know, the Auss Aussie cricketers after winning the World Cup. He's got his foot on the trophy, uh, you know, grabbing a beer. And you can totally empathize. You and I, uh, middle class people in this country, can totally empathize that you've had a good day. You've done your best. Uh, you won. 
uh, it's you celebrate you have a nice dinner you have you, you grab a drink you celebrate uh, but here you have narendra modi talking about the cyclone you know he's just come back from dubai yesterday uh, he's back to work uh, he's really really pushing it we haven't seen his 10 years of practice now we haven't seen any signs of uh, narcissistic megalomania uh, all the things that happen with people who get power we haven't really seen those those signs to the extent uh, that the opposition would tell us that they are there but they're not there we we can, we can you know we can see it is he the person you know when they say commit the hour commit the man is he, is it him now yes i think so it has been like that for 10 years now and in fact uh, that is one of the reasons why he has such a cult following why he has such a massive following why his name commands the kind of respect and automatically there will be electoral dividend uh, dividends so you see i mean that is what you know and, and and that is the thing you know i mean he comes across as senior i mean sincere genuine his concerns for people is uh, his concern for people is genuine his uh, desire to do something better for the country that comes across as genuine and uh, again i'm going to say the opposition might say that no it is not genuine the whole lot of uh, things are being said and can be said by the opposition but when it comes to the people they are the ultimate judge and they believe that whatever he is saying is absolutely genuine it is coming from the heart he, he, this gentleman wants to do something for us wants to drag india out of the cesspit it has been for decades wants to push india towards a developed status and that is why this mandate keeps coming over and over again you know you know i'm i'm going to draw the comparison and and a lot of people will find it strange some people will uh, of course find it offensive because they just are just perpetually unhappy but look at the country around you there is a positive energy does narendra modi get all the credit no does uh, mohandas gandhi or nehru get all the credit for independence no i remember gandhi famously said that 40000 britishers can't rule a country of 300 million people if 300 million people refuse to cooperate it is very simple how are they perpetuating the colonial raj they are perpetuating the colonial raj because you have been divided and you've sold out and you don't know what you're capable of once somebody shows you what you're capable of it's up to you to do it you need the rahul dravid but eventually it's everybody else has got to perform on the field so you can coach it and that's what narendra modi has to do coach it lead the way but you need it somebody with that single minded obsessive compulsive determination self belief the question now of course is is that what narendra modi represents so let me get ratan ratan sharda into this conversation ratan ji what does narendra modi now represent i mean we can talk about hat trick modi guarantee and all these things but we are seeing history as it's made we are seeing india completely change not a facelift a complete systemic paradigm change is happening in this country what what credit credit does narendra modi take away for it well for people of my generation who have seen the queues for scooter seven years booking for scooter black marketing of that paying money to get a telephone started after five years of wait and today's aspirational bharat this is what has changed and we are lucky to have a leader who let us have this view what india can be and not what india cannot be remember the ridicule when upi was launched remember how digital bharat was ridiculed that naysayers who believe that india is not yet ready for any of this developments and who believe that we have something called hindu rate of growth which is basically nehruvian or socialist rate of growth would understand what modi has done to this country he has aroused aspirations which are there and given them wings and people can see the world change before them in last 10 years right from and see it's a 23 year record it is not just record of 10 years it's 23 years of record a commitment 18 hours of work continuously for 23 years without any thing to do with the family or any of that and we also must realize that when everybody was declaring welfare measures and people said modi ji just doing catch up you know by saying offering welfare measures which were also offered by congress in a much much bigger uh, you know way why didn't people take congress uh, uh, you know welfare measures but depended on modi even though they were lesser than what others were offering it is delivery so when you believe that what he says is delivered whether state level or uh, or national level we have uh, uh, i can't stories. hear anything 
Okay, so, sorry, sir. I'm going to get man. my PCR crew to I'm, just just, to just manage muted. this. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah. I, yeah, I think the gentleman prop, uh, is can uh, kindly tell the difference between the PCR control, uh, the muting, or if he can't figure it out, let's not interrupt the telecast. It'll, it'll just it'll just break up the telecast. Uh, so, uh, let's speak okay. to him or or, or figure so, another way. Ratanji, just finish your also, thought, then I have another question. Yes, yeah, so also look at the way people have negated complete divisive caste politics, divisive, totally one-sided communal offerings to the people, and all this has affected the, the people who don't believe and people who just declare. Uh, declare various schemes but don't implement them. All this together and see very importantly Modi ji created a class of women who have become powered by themselves. It has not happened over overnight. He very consciously built, I would put in a leftist term, he has smashed the patriarchy by empowering the women but not making anybody enemy but by empowering women. Every step you talked about have empowered women. They have become a class by themselves. Yeah. They have become a voting class. No, no, these are, these are, you know, if, if, if you, if you've done the micro loans, for example, in the scale that have been yes. done through Mudra and Swanidhi, uh, these, these things when one, you know, in Bangladesh won Nobel Prizes. Uh, so, you know, yes. and, and the scale on, in India is unmanageable. It's not, it's not a few yeah. thousand, it's not a few hundred thousand, it's hundreds of it millions. It's mind blowing. You look at the numbers, they would make so many countries together not being able to achieve that. Result. No, we, we can't process yeah. the numbers. Yeah, I can't process the numbers. Yeah. It's, it's difficult yeah. to process. Let me get Professor Nalapath in quickly into this uh, conversation. Professor Nalapath, you know, here we are 10 years now into, into Narendra Modi. And he said, look, with the election mandate that I've got today, you can tell that his, there's a level of confidence that increases and, and of course a political leader uh, lives on election victories and energy and enthusiasm comes from there. But uh, we've just had 100 million people vote in an election. You've had a peaceful transition of power in four states. Uh, you send an international message for people who tell you that you're a broken democracy, that you're at the bottom of the, of the food chain, India will never get developed will try to break you, insult you, humiliate you. What's the global message that's gone out today? Look, Rishabh, very frankly, the global message is that the Indian voter knows what's good for her or him. And I use the words advisedly, her or him, because Prime Minister Modi has put women's empowerment and women's development, youth empowerment and youth development, farmers' employment, uh, uh, empowerment and farmers' development and empowerment of the poor and development of the poor as his main priorities. I want to say that this election shows that social media is not the same as social work. You can do tremendous things in social media. You can be an internet sensation. You can be a darling of the media, if you uh, frankly. But at the same time, unless you're prepared to do the hard, heavy, nitty gritty, what I mean, what, no, a simple, simplified way, not social media, but social work. Well, I'd like to say that social media is, is not going to be translated into votes at the polls. Now, the, the 2024 polls is now very close. And that shadow has come across this, this election as well. And I think people have been looking beyond their states into 2024. And they want to show Prime Minister Modi that they have support in him. Now, you know, uh, I'd like to say that, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, uh, you're, we're, you're, we're talking of the Congress Party. The Congress Party has lost two very important states. Now, the Congress Party is not a new party. Of course, not that new parties have done any better. In fact, they've done far worse. But the Congress Party has, unfortunately for the Congress Party, failed repeatedly in fulfilling its promises. So with what confidence can you say, for the 497th time, I'm giving this promise to you. The same family is giving this promise to you. That the 497th time will be different from the 496 times in the past in which a similar promise was given and not kept. And finally, Rishabh, I'd like to say headlines. You may be able to get headlines. Definitely. There's no question about it. You may be able to get a media storm. You may be able to get people fighting over each other, even in foreign countries, to invite you to give a speech. Because there's nothing, frankly, some people in foreign countries like better 
than to basically have somebody come from India and knock down India. Oh, India is terrible. India is this. It's not a democracy. It's not anything of the kind. I mean, soon after Rahul Gandhi said India is not a democracy, elections are not free, the Congress party won Karnataka. Are we to assume that that Karnataka was rigged by the Congress party? And that's why the Congress party won? Because after all, according to Rahul Gandhi himself, elections are rigged in India. So who rigged the Karnataka election? I'd like to ask. Who has uh, rigged the Telangana election? I'd like to ask. So the fact of the matter is, okay. the voter has proved all these people wrong. And I'm frankly, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm delighted by this particular verdict. I share the sentiments of Ratanji in that, very frankly. The Prime Minister came in with a new approach to governance and to politics. He didn't come with a sense of entitlement. He was not empowered in the past. He had an extremely austere, if I may say so, a very difficult life. Unlike many people who were in politics and are in politics, a very difficult life. And he came there and he said, I'm going to make a change. So when the Congress party spoke of change, the voters said, hang on, isn't Prime Minister Modi the change? Okay. Uh, stay with me. Uh, I will come to Swati ji, who is sitting and uh, brave of her to be sitting this evening. I appreciate the fact that ma'am you are with us and, and taking it in the spirit uh, that a democracy is. Peaceful transition of power are happening in four states, which you won three last time and not this time around. Let me quickly get, uh, just touch base with Shekhar and, and Rajalakshmi ji as well as Prakash Bhandari ji. Uh, Shekhar, where then is what we see ourselves? Because there is, there is a group of people who are convinced both in India, both in abroad. But when we see just the reality, yes, the highways today are different. Yes, you know, I've, I've started taking trains again because they, they run more on time and they're cleaner and they're nicer and they run faster. Uh, traveling sometimes by train has become easier than flying or driving. Uh, yes, India GDP is the fastest. Yes, we'll be the third largest economy, maybe in a year, maybe in 18 months. Yes, our forex reserves, our steel production, our food production, our power production, everything is in a different orbit. And yes, I've seen for myself that people gave up their gas cylinders in favor of the poor in their crores, that the houses were built in their crores, the toilets have been built. Everything is not perfect, but a lot of work has been done as there has to be some respect for what has happened. Well, I think uh, ab absolutely. Uh, so. Uh, I just heard Modiji's victory speech. Uh, you know, I was looking, hearing all the questions you were asking our fellow panelists. And I think one thing which really stands out for Mr. Modi is he represents an India which is, vi which is very vi vibrant, which is very ambitious, and which is very grounded. And uh, I think that's why he has won. And this is something which I mentioned earlier too. I think our Honorable Prime Minister has a very, very, very strong emotional connect with the voter. He just understands what the voter wants. He's hardworking, he's disciplined. And he, you know, he he has a he doesn't take any prisoners at war. I think he just goes all out to win. And I think uh, winning is a habit. Now, now the fact that they won so comfortably in all these states, it just goes to show that this is like the semi-final of the World Cup, and the real the real battle starts now. Okay, but let's and say let's say Australia wins the World Cup and you lose after having having had a good performance, giving them a giving them a fair fight. At what point of time do you say you know what actually their strategy, their their practice sessions? their, you know, uh, time in the nets, uh, their abilities were actually good. It's something we should emulate, not simply just fight. Absolutely. So, uh, I, think, I think here, what the Honorable Prime Minister has done is he has left on the front. Be it his, uh, you know, be it his meetings, be it his sessions with the voters, he was going all out. And he's always been the face of BJP. We have seen how he can just connect with the voter. And uh, his emotional connect, his, you know, his Modi ka guarantee. When he tells us the Modika guarantee, you actually get goosebumps when you listen to it. Because he really means business. This is a man who is a seasoned leader. We underestimate the leadership qualities of Mr. Modi, but Mr. Modi is a seasoned leader who has been leading this country for a very long time. Not just India, but Gujarat. No, but, and the we, fact that no, but we, you have leaders and sometimes there are natural leaders. Sometimes people have to learn to become, become, become leaders. Sometimes there is a situation demands you take up leadership even if you really don't want to. We've all experienced those moments in our life. The, you know, the question I'm trying to address, and let me try to address that with Prakash Bhandari. Bhandari ji, 
is Narendra Modi and the methodology and what he's come out and said, because some of them are simple facts, that this is where India is, this is where India aspires to be. Why do we not see other parties going, you know what, we respect you for this kind of vision, we are seeing the change in India, and we will join you, but we will have a better plan. Mr. Bandari, if you can hear me, sir. Okay, I'm going to assume not. Uh, but Rajalakshmi Joshi, why don't you take, take that thought? At what point of time do people who want to challenge Narendra Modi at least respect that India is changing under him and come up with a better plan for that change, better execution strategy? Uh, good evening, uh, Rishabh. And, uh, you know, we have had a lot of uh, discussions on uh, all of this. And, uh, you know, uh, one line struck me, uh, and I just want, I wish to quote it, that, uh, you know, the uh, Karakartas at the BJP headquarters have been uh, saying, they say, hum sapne nahi haqiqat ko bunte hain, tabhi, tabhi to sabhi Modi ji ko chunte hain. That is something that really struck me. You know, just some uh, word speak is not going to really help. And, uh, you know, this is what uh, people have to realize, that now, you know, I, I have been telling you this, and a lot of times that now India has become an aspirational Bharat. It's not just the uh, Bharat of, uh, you know, some a few years back. Now, uh, you know, uh, Ratan Sharda ji was talking about how uh, Modi ji has spent 23 years in his political career. Now he has spent another 20 years before that understanding and visiting every corner, bit and corner of Bharat. So he has understood the pulse and feel of the nation. And, uh, you know, uh, Professor Nalapaji, he was talking about the women folk. So it is that women-led development that Modi ji talks about. So, you know, it's not just something about just saying that I'm a girl, I can fight, and then you don't even go and visit the places where actually uh, some uh, women are facing problems in their own uh, state, you know. So those kind of things where you have a double speak, that really doesn't go well with the uh, the women folk and it doesn't go well with uh, you know the uh, whatever promises you make the guarantees when when it comes the guarantees when it comes with terms and conditions now you know what the biggest uh, difference that i find in the welfare schemes of uh, the central government and what the guarantees of uh, the congress what they're making is see the congress has blatantly said you know mr dk shukmar blatantly came out and said that uh, we are not going to be able to get into development programs because we have these guarantees to fulfill. Whereas at the same time, whatever welfare programs are being run by the self, uh, central government, say maybe it may be the uh, free ration that is being given to the 80 crore plus people. So at the same time, you do have development also. You do have the infrastructure, you have education, you have healthcare, you have everything running alongside with these welfare programs. So it's not just something that you are just giving uh, people okay. you are doing. Okay, so, 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 so let, me, let, me just, let, let me just interject here. Uh, India has the biggest opportunity in the history of the world. Never have before so many young people been in one place at one time. It will never happen again. The average age of the country is 29. There are better part of 700 million people that are younger than me. And I'm a millennial. Okay. So that's also a risk. If we don't make it in the next 10, 20 years, we're in a whole lot of trouble. So we are all in the same boat. And I take a lot of pride. Now, when people who, my friends, and they've all left and gone and studied and work abroad, they come back and they see India change. I, I can talk about my gigabit internet uh, at home, which is as fast as you get it in Silicon Valley. Uh, I can talk about the highways and I can talk about why don't you take a train and the new airports and the $600 billion of foreign exchange reserves. You can see India changing. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Now, so why not? Why not have some grudging respect? Let, let's let's get the Congress in on, on, on that thought. And I know I know it's it's complicated and it's in subtle. Swati ji, we are all in the same boat. We are all we are all hoping and cheering on ourselves, which is Team India, Team Bharat. If a lot of good things have happened, if we are in a many directions, we have to accept that within a year we'll probably be the third largest economy in the world. Why do we grudge it? Why can't we celebrate it? Why don't we copy the good things and join with better plans? Bishop, no matter what I say today, it'll look like I'm trying to swallow the bitter pill. 
but uh, you know we congratulate the bjp for a fantastic win it's a, it's a, it was unexpected like i was uh, saying during the day as well even chatisgarh has uh, shocked us beyond uh, madhya pradesh for that matter you know and rajasthan of course but when you talk about uh, why not uh, implement welfare you know better schemes etc so rajasthan was the one having a health insurance of cover of 25 lakhs rajasthan was the one which had that uh, uh, mehangai uh, 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 shiver as well so we've had those schemes it's not like we are not implementing like mr ratan sharda and mr nalapat were talking about how you know uh, we only promise and we're not able to deliver i know like i said i said today is a bad day for us to be even uh, bringing up anything at all it looked like a bit of hell okay ma'am so let me rephrase let me rephrase the question do you in the congress realize that for you know rational people there are loyalists on all sides but for rational people what a sour note it leaves when your senior leaders sit abroad and bad mouth their own country it leaves such a sour note uh, does it sink in that that's not the tone and tenor that india wants to hear anymore rishab when our leaders talk abroad and the statements we are talking about we completely stand by those statements even if this is the result we stand by those statements because what the leaders out there what gandhi was talking abroad is about how a democracy is being throttled let's not forget misuse of ubi etc and like i said today is a bad day for us so i'm not going to bring it up today but all those are facts none of them please please tell me even in chatisgarh now uh, there was uh, last six months the ed was so effective right it was so active out there not effective sorry active right so these are the this is what the senior ed talking there's nothing wrong yeah i i i very strongly recall uh, amit shah being jailed he spoke about it recently uh, under home minister chidambaram uh, under your government so i know it cuts both ways but that wasn't my question my question was that it leaves you have certain advisors at the highest levels perhaps of a different generation who maybe are not in tune with bad mouthing your country who you think that uh, the us perception of india which might be negative because ma'am you know where where we lie on the democracy index the americans tell us we are you know worse than pakistan afghanistan and everything uh, you know you and i know both know that's not true we are a vibrant democracy you've just seen 100 million people cast their votes and four peaceable transit uh, trans transition of power taking place today so when we nod along with them why does it not sink into the congress today that that leaves such a sour sour taste and when the good things are happening in the country we can't we find them difficult to celebrate why not why not join in we do we do appreciate the good things as well we do appreciate but it is as an opposition it is also our duty to bring out what is lacking it is also our duty to voice the truth voice the uh, concerns of the minority and i'm not talking about minority by religion or caste i'm talking about minority voters it is our duty as opposition to uh, voice our concerns and their concerns and that's what we are doing now and we choose to do it for example you said we do it on foreign land well that is what that is where we are even allowed to speak freely please understand that that is what those are the interviews of these senior leaders which are even aired properly let's not forget the kind of media time that the opposition gets i mean i, I understand i i know i have media today and i know you know media is the fourth pillar of democracy but how much time does the opposition get on media how much time does media spend questioning the government and compare it to the time spent by the media pre 2014 no i no you, you are not being unfair uh, in in the questions that you're raising and but I, i'm just making a suggestion to you uh, that uh, that if you try a different tack uh, maybe it uh, it will sink in better okay so let me let me let me then rephrase it what do you think in the past 4 or 5 years we've done really well uh you've just heard the figures uh, our forex reserves are the highest we are the highest growing economy in the world we will be the third largest economy uh, in a matter of a year or so uh, our steel production cement production food production power generation uh, tax collection direct indirect everything is at record levels is there something that we should be proud of looking back no all of it for that matter whatever you are saying is right whatever but numbers you are quoting we should be all proud of it but we should also keep in mind the the repercussions of these facts please when you talk about gst collection let's also forget let's not also run and not forget to mention the tax which has been levied on aata and dal so that is the gst collected so as opposition while we celebrate the gst collected while we celebrate the concept of gst when we bring out and we voice the concern of the rickshaw pullers who's paying tax on the salt that he buys 
There's nothing wrong in it. We are criticizing the scheme. We are only saying you need to brush it up. You need to implement okay. it in a manner. Okay. So, a manner. so so let me let me let me let me phrase it this way. If for Narendra Modi or the BJP, the victory today would have been sweeter because the Congress put up a tough fight and it wasn't certain till the very end. If it was a walkover. Uh, then it would have been taken for granted. So uh, Swati ji is not wrong. Is their duty? Is their job to nitpick, uh, to be a, a, a pain in the behind over everything, to uh, whine and cry and, and do drama over everything? That's their duty. That's how a democracy works, and it should work. Really but perhaps there is a there, perhaps there is a tone and tenor which is a bit different, uh, which is what I'm suggesting, uh, which uh, we would love to see a lot more. So let let me let me uh, flip this back to Joyta. Joyta, what is that tone and tenor? Because uh, it is the job of the opposition to be critical, hypercritical, stingingly critical of everything that government does. They are not supposed to be singing odes and paeans uh, to uh, the ruling government. So where is that distinction then where you can come and say that I am really thrilled with how India is doing but somehow not share that credit with Narendra Modi because I grudge him that credit. Why? Why not say good? If he's, if he's done this, good for us. Well, if you are looking at the uh, principal faces of the opposition, I'm not just talking about the Congress, the other parties as well. What are they talking about from their platforms, public platforms? They're only talking about a particular industrialist. They're only talking about, you know, caste censors. They are talking about OBCs. You know, why OBCs have been totally ignored and why OBCs must be, uh, uh, you know, given a better share of the governance pie when the fact of the matter is that the Prime Minister is an OBC, the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister is an OBC, but even Congress's own Chief Minister in Rajasthan is also an OBC. So, whatever you are talking about, this, these issues are not inspiring the people. They are not making them think. In fact, now that I'm watching this program on a TV, I'll just read out a comment that is coming on your YouTube channel. Okay, someone called Black Bull is saying no accountability within Congress, workers and voters on why they lost by such a huge margin. They only blames. You see, this is what the public is talking about, that there is nothing remotely constructive about the opposition. They are the only reason that they are coming together, the only reason that they be, want to be in power, because for the sake of being in power and because the, their sole fight is they are coming together, whatever they are talking about, their sole aim is to remove this uh, gentleman called Mr. Modi. Yeah, but, but, but that's the aim in politics. But you know, like the BJP says, uh, the question that they raise is, uh, uh, is on the, the question of, you're referring to the concept of niyat. What is, what is at the core of why you're doing things? Uh, is, it, is it for a higher purpose? Uh, and you can choose to believe it or not. Raja Munib has been patiently listening in. Uh, sir, thanks for sitting with us. Let me quickly now come to you. So when we talk about the concept of niyat, it, it's rather expansive to say that the Congress wishes everybody ill and they are all, all power hungry and greedy people because politics or public life demands sacrifices from you. Uh, you have to give, uh, uh, have a mild appreciation that if you and I lose a family member, uh, it, it wounds us for many, many, many years. Uh, Rahul Gandhi has had uh, both his father and grandmother uh, heinously assassinated uh, for being in public life. Uh, it's, I can imagine what wound that would leave you for many decades. So to think that, uh, that this is the issue, I don't know. But there, is a, there seems to be a perception, like I said, a sour taste in the mouth, that you seem to be bad-mouthing India when India is on the rise. Why is that? Why are the, do, do, do the Sam Petrodas of the world and all need a reality check? Absolutely, they need a reality check. See, the problem is, if you look at uh, BJP and Congress, the difference is between the positive messaging and the negative messaging. If you take anything from Congress, it's always, you know, wrapped up against this negative messaging, and that is what is hurting Congress more. The problem with, uh, you know, you asked a question to our co-panelist from Congress, Swati, that, you know, why can't we respect, uh, you know, uh, what we are celebrating? Respect comes when you acknowledge something. The problem with Congress is they are not willing to acknowledge even a single thing which BJP does for the country. And that is where the, essentially the problem lies. Because then you build up this, you know, they, they have been talking about in campaign, uh, you know, about a particular businessman. But look at what, what they have done on the ground. In Bastar region in Chhattisgarh, they have only lost because under the Congress government, 
Adani went ahead and, you know, the land acquisition actually happened under the police protection. So that is, you know, you're not walking your talk. What you're saying in public, you're not doing it on the ground. On the contrary, you're going and doing something opposite to what you have been telling the whole nation. So I think they're messaging overall. You know, but, you know, but, but Raja Muneeb, you know, I, I, I've spoken about this and it makes sense. You needed a Jamshedji Tata to build India's first steel plant. You need large corporates. We might not like them. We might be suspicious, rightly so, of Meta and Google. Uh, but that's how the Americans, uh, you know, uh, pursue the domination of high technology. So you need large corporates, whether, they, whether that be the, the Tatas these days, uh, whether that be the Adanis or the Ambanis, you need somebody who's going to buy the port in Haifa and build all your ports, who can, who can do this at an international scale. Uh, now, is everybody perfectly honest in business? I don't know. But uh, to come and bash them and trash them, and you know, get sucked into some George Soros issue. It's a problem. So wh why why does the Congress still feel that you know these foreigners are sitting out there and they have money and they have lobbies and as long as we get approvals from them and pats on the back from them, that that translates into votes for us here. It's not. It's not happening. It's not going to happen because somewhere, you know, they have aligned with this global left. And that is where the Congress has another problem. You know, they're going extreme left in their ideology than what they, it, uh, you know, originally was before 2014. They're identifying themselves with the global left cabal, which is, you know, out there to bring down the government in India. And today, the you know, uh, the average Indian is very, very cautious and very, very aware of what is happening. It was always the foreign, inter, uh, you know, interference, which they are trying to do in India and trying to, you know, weaken the India from within because India is rising. And, uh, you know, they, they want to take it, they want to slow the growth of India. I think that is a cardinal mistake Congress is making. They are falling into this trap of the global cabal. They are trying to, you know, uh, demean India. And they think that by going with this narrative, they are going to get votes from people. But unfortunately, the complete opposite is happening. And what is happening is that they're losing ground. They're losing respect among people. They're losing votes among people. They're even losing, you know, on the, even on the social media. They're even losing the battle there as well. So this war of narratives is extremely negative from the Congress yeah. side, and it seems like Congress you know, is you know, coming in with you, you, know, you know, I, 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 I it's, it's really personal because I, I'm in a, I'm in a professional chair right now, but I'm proud of my country to tears. I'm of that generation that uh, had the opportunity uh, to leave, but I'm proud of my country to to tears. And my, and my friends and relatives all living in various parts of the world. Uh, come and say ki haan ji road sadak tuti vi thi ye tuti vi thi and i am convinced that we'll we'll make it you you give us time we're going to make it we're going to make it you keep chipping away and and that's what i do yes so there are problems uh, uh, what the congress spokesperson was saying about the media is absolutely fair if the media just becomes a, a, a bashing pot for one point or the other and uh, requires no brain application no mental application of what is right what is wrong what is good what is bad it it you're not doing your job you're an insult to your profession you should, your job is to sit here to apply your mind, to see what makes sense, what is right, what is wrong, use common sense uh, and, and take it forward. But common sense is telling you that India is heading into a new orbit. Common sense is telling you that we are damn proud of it. Common sense is telling you that Narendra Modi is the coach of it right now. And we need, he can't be the coach forever. And we need other people to jump in and say here, you know, we are willing to take over the baton not just say that this is all nonsense, the race is rigged, the, the stadium is rigged, everything is rigged. Let me quickly get Ratan Charda into this. Ratanji, then where are we? Has, you know, I, I said commit the hour, commit the man. You needed an individual to, to, you know, get the British out of India. You needed See, something uh, to happen, something special to happen. Has it happened already or is, it, or is more time required? Let me start from a positive note for Congress. The rejuvenation of Congress in Telangana is excellent. They took the initiative, they rushed into the Telangana vacuum, BJP was dithering, and what could have been uh, BJP's bigger uh, playground, Congress took it over because it acted in time. And they worked very well, they won the government. It has become a launching pad for Congress to become number one opposition party. I regret to say this will also lead to disintegration of uh, the dot alliance because others who see that Muslim votes have got transferred to Congress, the base is gone, everybody is trying to appease uh, Muslims with specific manifestos. Only negative for Congress in Telangana was specifically Muslim appeasement manifesto. 
Of course, they are going after dividing the society. They should realize that has not worked. The the division into caste lines of Hindus and consolidation of Muslims. Okay, so Radha Shah, let me let, let me run. so let me pick on exactly. So let me pick on one more important yeah. point. One more important yeah. point. See, when you talk of media, do you remember till 2014, people like me never found a space on the TV. Absolutely Why? right. Right. And today they get a space, but they come out as very abusive, very conceited spokespersons. They come out well. They are not as balanced as Swatis today. They will do well for a month and start shouting, start abusing people, and you know, losing their temper. This is not the way to come on the TV. Then you blame media. You release a list of 14 anchors who will not be entertained. Is that democracy? You talk of emergency, no democracy. You win elections, then you say there is no democracy. So these myths that they try to build. Okay. Not okay, but, but okay, but, but okay. So let me let me rephrase the, the question. The, the, the point, the, the point I'm trying to touch base upon that there is something that is happening in India that everybody can feel happening. You yes. can feel it happening. You can see it around you in the traffic that you sit in. You can see it. You can see it, and when you go to the market, you know that you're no longer carrying cash. You can see something different that is happening. So there has to be an ability to partake in it. For multiple political parties, why is the con conversation still about either minorities or OBC or it's it's exactly. about it's about democracy? What is that X factor that is missing? What is Modi homed in on that they are still not just being able to see it, even though it's in the face? See, But, very simply, they are disconnected with their very roots by abusing Sanatan Dharma, abusing that, that was in the Congress. That that's that was an error. Yeah, yeah. So with this kind of approach. You don't connect to people. See, people, rustic people, Indian people, the so-called hoi poli, the proletariat, are not as conceited, as disconnected with the society as the Congress is today. Are Congress has been hijacked by Rahul Gandhi with the help of JNU a type of crowds, and that is the reason even young, comfortable, young leaders of Congress, very bright leaders of Congress, whom I have met personally, are very uncomfortable. Many have left. Others feeling suffocated. Is that the way Congress can grow? Okay. No, today no, you no, know so Revan. Party, person, no, so Revan. Pa yeah. Who is Revan? Just a moment. Yeah. Revan is an ex-ABP activist. That is the man connected to ground. So you have a leader who came from Sangh School of Thought today leading Congress in Telangana. Is okay. that a lesson? Okay. For people watching the broadcast, Revan is leading the sort of Congress uh, uh, campaign. Uh, Management in Telangana, and he is the hero of the hour for the Congress. No, no doubt about it. But again, that's missing. I'll give you, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a practical example of people watching the telecast. Last time the elections happened in Tamil Nadu. Okay. Now I am sitting here in the media, and I understand that there is a North India bias in the media. All the news channels mostly operate from the north. All the journalists come from the north. Once upon a time, most of the news channels were operated, you know, by by Bengali journalists. So there used to be a Bengali bias in in the media. So I am saying, okay. We need to make an effort. We did the first telecast in the Tamil language and national channel here in prime time. I have done I don't know hundreds of hours of programmings on on on. Okay, I think DK Shiv Kumar is speaking. Let's quickly listen into what he's saying, please. We'll come back to this thought. To meet the governor, we are going to meet the governor now. To claim the formation of the government. Number one. Number two. Tomorrow morning we are conducting. Tomorrow morning at 9:30. Tomorrow morning at 9:30, we have called for a uh, meeting of the newly elected Congress legislators, including our uh, allied partners. We have called a meeting. So 9:30, we are meeting tomorrow morning. All the MLAs. And now we are going to meet the governor. Then you heard it. Uh, they're, they're taking claim to form the government, and tomorrow CLP meeting, and they'll have to elect, of course, decide on a on a chief minister for uh, Telangana. Is it going to be Rivant? Uh, maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But I'll just complete my thought. So this is about a mindset change. Okay, you see a problem and you try to fix it. Everybody can do it in the humble ways. Uh, when we sit and have geostrategic. Conversations, and you know, if you watch NewsX, we do a lot of those. We found that yes, in geostrategic conversation, most of the people who are retired generals or retired diplomats are all men. There's a preponderance, so we will have to find the women to have women representation. If you make an effort, you can fix it. So there was a North India bias. What can I do as an editor to fix it? Ensure that I do my utmost, okay, uh, to promote Tamil language, Tamil culture. 
understand it myself. We've talked about Kiladi and all these things. So the last elections happened in Tamil Nadu. We said, okay, there's politics we understand. I'm going to do special telecasts on how to convert Tamil Nadu into a maritime hub. We're going to talk about converting Tamil Nadu into a, a, the new space port that is being built there, into a space technology hub, into the electronics manufacturing hub. Lot of these innovative startups are coming from Tamil Nadu. It's, it's very exciting. So these are the conversations that you can choose to have on television. I'm willing to do this, okay? So you don't know how heartbreaking it is when you see some chap is sitting there and thinking we are still living in the days of Periyar, where if you come in, uh, abuse and insult and say this is you were all you Sanatan Dharmis are vermin and you should be eradicated like a disease that this is some sort of welcome or somebody is doing uh, Hindi Tamil Jagadas I mean it, it's it's so out of tune where what we should be discussing let me get Professor Nalapath into this Professor Nalapath has there then been a fundamental shift are we thinking differently the, the fact is Rishabh that the people of India have always been rational people. And the problem is that the leaders who were, have been in India for a long time, they had, they came in a sense from a privileged backgrounds and they had no real uh, ability, if I may say so, to understand and to trust the people. And that's why efforts were made to divide them on the basis of caste, on the basis of religion, and basically uh, look and, and put some fragments together and, and so that the fragments will then constitute a vote bank. The reality is our problems are common problems. They have to be solved by everybody. Sabka saath. There's no question of any vikas without sabka saath. Uh, there's no question of vikas for one without sabka vikas. So this is the point. And I'd like to say, for example, all those who are talking about, you know, I really think Swati has done an excellent job in representing the Congress yeah, party. Yeah, she's been and fair and reasonable. Yeah, party, she's been I'd fair like and reasonable. Say, That's exactly what I'm you want to hear. Fair and reasonable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Allow me to say. Yeah, please. So the, you know, the, the Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, I'm sure Shweta will not disagree. They are the most influential leaders of the Congress party today. They are both out on bail. The case has been filed, was filed not by the government of, of, of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The solitary case against them has been filed by, uh, by Dr. Subramanian Swami, who if you go on Twitter, my social media team tells me, he is one of the fiercest critics of, of Prime Minister Modi, even more of a critic than Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi. So the case against them, on which they're out on bail, has been filed by a fierce critic of Prime Minister Modi, who is going around the country and basically using social media, as so many people are, to say all kinds of things which, frankly, uh, some of us uh, very totally disagree with. But he has a right to say it. And I'd like to say that, you know, uh, I mean, you know, he's a friend of mine. There's no question about it. I mean, uh, clearly, I don't influence him on, on some matters, including uh, the, the kind of... Uh, feelings he has about certain people and he doesn't influence me in the same kind of matter. But how do you say that there is, when this is the situation, not a single case has been filed by the government of India against Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. And may I point out one good thing about this election? It showed that people transcended caste. It showed that corruption was an issue. Okay. So when we talk about the ED running riot, the fact is, if they come up with clinching evidence, and they come up with the liquor scam, for example, was pretty deadly for the ruling government there. And that is one of the main reasons why I think people got upset with them. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, so, so, okay. so, you know, so it, it's about believers. Shekhar, I'll just give you another example. Okay. So we were doing an exercise because the government comes up with all these kind of statistics that we have done cent percent this and cent percent that. How do we know unless you go and check, right? So we did multiple states. This is about a year ago to see what is the Avas Yojana, where are the toilets, where is this Ujwala, where are the Hargal Jal, okay? Now, I didn't give my brief to any reporters. My brief was just go and see who are these beneficiaries, what are they saying? And as, hap as it would happen, if you go and do a dipstick test in any part of the country, some of the beneficiaries will be lower caste, some will be upper caste, some will be Hindu, some will be Muslim, some will be Sikh, okay? So this is what we found. We found one Banu Begum, uh, in in the eastern part of UP, very thrilled, talking about that I don't have to worry about my toilet because my toilet is completely untutored. 
वी सो अनदर मोहम्मद हुसैन हु इज सो थ्रिल्ड बिकॉज घर पे लेंटिन लग गई है एंड ही वॉज सो हैप्पी दैट ही गॉट द लोन डायरेक्टली इन इज नेम दैट ही कुड मेक इज हाउस सो यू 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 स्टार्ट सींग थिंग्स दैट आर चेंजिंग एंड बाई डिलीवरिंग दैम सो दस देन दिस चेंज फ्रॉम बींग अ स्लोगन पोलिटिकली कन्वीनियंट सबका साथ सबका विकास बट वी रियली मीन अस अस एंड देम और इज इट एक्चुअली ट्रांसलेटिंग इन टू बिलीफ i think it's just translating to believe so like you mentioned this this just exemplifies that uh, the sabka sath sabka vikas is not just for one community it's for india as a whole and when india wins as a whole the party also wins so like i said earlier i i really believe that uh, this 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 party believes in doing things and believes in exemplifying it and that's been their turn around which has happened in the past now what the opposition can learn from it what they can cannot learn from it i think it's totally up to understanding that you need to know what the voter wants and what the voter needs and also working very sincerely and diligently to make it happen i think the leadership has, has been very strong has been very astute we've had the karyakartas also doing a brilliant job so i think this victory is earned well and it's also because of the discipline because of the hard work put in by the prime minister his persona is overarching everywhere i think wherever he is okay. gone okay. he's worked really hard be be it is uh, Okay, no, Shekhar. Uh, I'll just give you another anecdotal example. You know, COVID started, and the PM said, "Why don't you guys all stand in your balcony, okay, and take your burtans and do tang tang for the doctors?" And you know, he was made a mockery of by several of the opposition parties. You know, I saw my own elderly parents, uh, and I know they have uh, uh, for a long time yeah. they, have, they have been Congress voters most of their life, right? Standing and doing tang tang on the balcony, okay. now i know you run you run in run teams i run teams you know sometimes you have a team day you do tug of war you do all sorts of games you do which have yeah. got nothing to do with uh, the job profile but you do it to build team spirit so as a team leader Correct. i can totally understand where the logic is coming from yes it's yes it's almost childish but you just to see everybody doing it you know sorts of has some sort of that we are all in this together but you come and make fun of it and then people are actually doing it you're making fun of all of them why is why why do that why why is it just that that cynicism is constantly inbred and see uh, rishab i think it just boils down to the fact that they cannot accept the fact that a chaiwala has become a prime minister a chaiwala who was just a meager chaiwala has become a very successful chief minister has become a successful prime minister is a leader who is feted not just in india but across the world and people just cannot digest that now what really happens is ego takes over and you just want to don't want to accept the fact that this is a man whose leadership skills are really good across the strata i'm talking about we have seen his body language we've seen the way he talks we've seen the way he delivers his leadership is exemplary now either you if 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 you're a strong opposition if you want to win which the congress has done in telangana i think they've learned it very quickly you have to learn from your opposition and you have to learn how to manage it and and about uh, mr modi talking about you know banging the plates it's a motivation at the end of the day it is about getting people together and people know the 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 seriousness of it and they would all do it because the prime minister is telling them to do so i think yeah. he's very good as yeah, a motivator yeah but like i said na just any, any yeah, like, like any rational person is seeing this and obviously it's got nothing to do with the pandemic it's not going to uh, scare away the disease uh, but uh, you understand why it's being done just like uh, by why uh, hr teams like i said organize a uh, uh, team days Absolutely. and and you go play tug of war in a park that's got nothing to do with the job okay uh, it's it's a bit of a joke yes and this meant to be something different okay so let me let me let me then rephrase this and get raja munib into this raja munib let me let's look at change in tack okay uh, you saw rahul gandhi come out and try okay you saw him do this bharat jodo yatra the biggest yatra is ever done we know that from chandra shekhar to you know lk advani uh, to senior leaders in his own party who were famous for pad yatras okay starting from gandhi uh, and nehru that it is a tried and tested and it's a good thing to happen so he came out and tried in himachal they they said okay most of the population have family members who are related to government service so this is what we need to nail uh, in karnataka they came up with promises you and i can disagree with them but they had something different so are they are they are they, are they testing it on the right track and little bit more and puts us put them in puts them into the team india category Rishabh, look. If you, uh, uh, I don't know how you see Bharat Jodo Yatra, but if you look at the narrative which they try to build on Bharat Jodo Yatra, what was it? Uh, we want to set up a Mahabad ki dukaan, right? 
Now, for God's sake, tell me what does that Mohabbat ki dukaan mean? Was the country on fire? No, it was not on fire. Was there, you know, riots uh, running amok in the country? No, they were not. Uh, there were more pressing issues. They could have talked about more positive issues rather than talking about, you know, setting up a Mohabbat ki dukaan. And if we go by the numbers of Bharat Jodo Yatra, uh, it has not done anything for them this time in Rajasthan. It has not done anything for them in Madhya Pradesh. No, but it that was my point. My point was trying something different. I would rather have Rahul Gandhi doing a Bharat Jodo Yatra uh, than sitting in, 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 no, in, in, in Chicago point, or Detroit point, trashing my country. No, that's right. But what are they trying to Jodo? The point is, what were they trying? What was the messaging behind Bharat Jodo Yatra? That is important. And, uh, you know, even if you did, a, you tried something new and yes, it, it, we wanted to, you know, uh, sort of, you know, uh, call it Congress resurgence or, you know, setting up Congress coming into a national narrative. Look at the Bharat Jodo Yatra and look at after what happened in Bharat Jodo Yatra. Okay. So you have done Yatra where you want to combine the country. Okay. And you want All right. To but like I said, you can, we, can, we can be equally cynical of everything the Congress does. I'm saying they tried to do something different. This was a yes, better better idea than taking advice yes. from Uncle Sam and saying, why don't you go to all these foreign countries and trash the country and then and then that's how you're going to win votes in the country, in India because at least the, the, the people you meet for dinner will agree with you. Uh, no, there's something no, disconnected. No, but, but what is See, any, anything has to have an intention and some target behind it. So what was the intention behind Bharat Jodo Yatra? That was not clear because the messaging was extremely, which was not resonating with the people. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Like I, look, like I said, you can be cynical if it's 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 only hubris if it fails. Uh, when you're being successful, it's it's perfect. When it, when it doesn't work, so let me get Swati ji back in. Swati ji, I'll just ask you a pragmatic, practical question. You and I both live here in India. We know that there is no Muslim genocide that is taking place. We know that religious freedom is very high. I mean, my next to my house, there is a gurdwara, there is a mandir. Azan happens uh, every evening. Nobody has a problem with it. We know for the fact that we are a pretty pretty stalwart democracy. We prove it at least twice a year. But when we are trashed abroad, why don't we stand up for India? Why don't we come out and say that democracy is strong here, there is no genocide, uh, there is no right-wing fundamentalism, this is all nonsense. Rishab, while I agree with you uh, in principle, but practically I do not agree with what you have said. Let's not forget about when uh, Bilkiswano, for example. When you say that there is, you know, there is no communal uh, undercurrent out here. What was Bilkis Banu all about? And it's still going on. And the, and the kind of welcome those, uh, those uh, convicted people received by the uh, BJP, by the BHP, right? When they, when they were welcomed like that. Secondly, that's not like we live in the NCR. I'm sure you heard of what was happening in the Mao area out here. I'm sure you heard of the riots that start off at... You know, uh, we eat uh, Hanuman Jayanti, we eat uh, well, all these, all, which were which unheard of. So when you say that there so is... So you really I, think I, we, are a, we are a communal people? No, no, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the difference. That if we are not communal, you and I sitting here are not communal. But the kind of undercurrent and the impression that was being created. And Bilkis Banu's, uh, the, uh, the convicted people welcomed and flashed all over media. What was the message you're trying to convey? You know, as we, as we speak, just two days ago, uh, three uh, people were convicted uh, in New Zealand, very tiny, peaceable country called New Zealand. Uh, they beat up a Sikh uh, radio presenter, stabbed him 40 times because he was uh, anti-Khalistan. Uh, this is in New Zealand, okay? Does that make New Zealand an ethno-communal country? Probably not. So I, I know it cuts this way, but I, I don't. I'm, the message I'm trying to say is, in in general, I, I, people would find it difficult to get convinced that India is a communalized country. That's what the British came and told us, and we want to move away from it. But you know, you guys seem to be telling us the same thing. So then, no, don't don't no, you no, feel no. that you're talking like the British? No, no, no. We're not talking like the British. The British era is long over. Long over. Right, but what we're talking about is we can't ignore these factors either. We can't brush everything with a pleasant. Yeah, ma'am, uh, but you know, yeah, but yeah, the the cops kill and uh, a disproportionately larger amount of of uh, African American people that they arrest. It's 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 a horrible no, thing no, to happen. No, 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 
wrongs make it uh, no, right? No, but like I said, that happens. But the British came and told us there are Hindus and there are Muslims and you can't get along and you hate each other. You seem to be telling us the same we, thing. I'm just trying to tell you that there's a flavor which doesn't make sense. We live here, no, commonsensical people, educated people say that there is no communalism to the score that you claim it is. And that doesn't sit in well. It doesn't fit in well. I wish you would try a different tack. Uh, Raja Lakshmi Joshi, why? Why do it that way? Are we... Are the Muslims in this country still living in abject fear that they really think that, you know, after having seen Modi for 10 years, 10 years, plenty of time, he's got what, another five, maybe a few more, certainly not more than that. He's already 72, so 73. So, so what's the worst that has, has happened in the past 10 years? Uh, Rishabh, you know, uh, what I find strange is that, uh, you know, the opposition paints this picture, they always try to create this perception that, uh, you know, the opposition is full of people who speak maybe English in a particular accent. And that is why they are more educated and they are more intellectual, etc, etc. And that uh, Narendra Modi ji, he, they keep, they, uh, you know, always keep asking for his certificate that what is your qualification. Now, you know, don't you find that it is strange that there is this person uh, Rahul Gandhi, who goes abroad yep. and, you know, even uh, even otherwise, he keeps making fun of, uh, you know, everything that is uh, Bharatiya. He talks about our uh, rituals. He talks about our cultures in a very derogatory way. He, uh, you know, in this entire... No, I, I genuinely he's think he's not making fun. I'm just generally thinking that there are people, and I've named them here, I'm not being shy, that the people who are telling him this is the smart way of going about it. Uh, and then they think that we are fools, that we don't understand what George Soros is up to and how these people are not your friends. And if you then sort of are nodding your head along, then I'm telling you exactly, you get the impression you are doing what the British did. And there are people who don't digest it, educated people. I'm one of them. Let me quickly uh, just introduce uh, Colonel Rajavardhan Rathore joining us on the, on the broadcast. Colonel Rathore, first of all, many, many congratulations both for the performance in Rajasthan overall and your own victory, sir. I believe you have uh, secured a win by over more than 20,000 votes. So many congratulations, sir. How are you feeling this evening? 50,000. 50,000 it so is much. now. Okay, congratulations, sir. And yeah, thank you so much. So how are you feeling this evening, yeah, sir? You didn't ask yeah. me a question, but how am I feeling? Yes, yeah. how am I feeling? It's fantastic. So, uh, to, uh, you know, in a, in a way, it's, uh, it's my political education which is getting completed, uh, wherein I've been in Lok Sabha for 10 years, and now uh, to do grassroots politics is, uh, is a lesson, is a, is a learning. So it's amazing. And also, now we will be part of uh, ensuring execution of the work of all the central schemes that come here, the funds that Prime Minister sends, we'll be ensuring uh, ground level work and ensuring delivery. So it's going to be very satisfying. But I can tell you this, this lead of 50,000 and, and the massive lead that we've gotten in, in Rajasthan and all the other uh, three states, at ground level, Prime Minister's uh, confidence in Prime Minister Modi is amazing. And this is because of He's built a reputation for the last 10 years with his hard work, with his commitment and ensuring delivery of schemes uh, to the grassroots level. So every family, and especially women who work very hard to sort of, you know, take care of their families, they know that if there's one person who is standing with them, it's Prime Minister Modi. And that is that sense of confidence. Remember, 22 lakh uh, first-time voters were there in Rajasthan. And any time you go to ground level, 19 times there was paper leak in Rajasthan. Um, every time somebody would study hard for like six months, eight months, and then get, get down to giving examination, and the examination would get terminated. Just try and understand, how would that student feel? One, he's cheated of time. Two, he's cheated, cheated of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And 19 times it has happened. So all of these young people were voting for Prime Minister Modi and BJP. You know, I know most people will want to know who will be CM and this and that. But, you know, I know these things matter in politics, but they're, they're largest things. We've just heard the Prime Minister speaking. And he's mentioned that, uh, look, India's uh, uh, cement production, power production, food production, tax collection, UPI collection is all at record highs. You and I both know that within maybe 18 months, we'll be the third largest economy in the world. Did it require, did we need, we needed one person, literally one human being during independence to grab this country by the scuff of the neck, be leader, be coach, uh, be somebody to hug and support and just, you know, break the clasp of the shackles. 
is narendra modi this era's man for that absolutely absolutely we needed that one person i can go back 10 years from now not 10 many many years back when i was perhaps 20 21 you know we would speak about the system in the country and and most people would we would feel helpless about the system and a lot of people would say you know if you cannot change it just join the system just imagine we people were sort of uh, you know the, the motivating you to join a corrupt system because the system cannot be changed the system is so big it takes a very strong willed person a person with great ability of administration to change it that is the most difficult thing to do mind you just to run the country as it's running is not a problem but to change the system and make the country run in a different way is a herculean task and prime minister modi has done that he's already done that now we need to change gears and go faster to achieve by 2029 be the third most powerful country in terms of economy and then perhaps in next 25 years be the most powerful country in the world and who is that who's getting benefited by all of that every single penny is coming down to the grassroots it's empowering people you know when we provide water when we provide road when we provide health facilities to a village person or to a semi urban person or let's say to an urban person it's not for votes it is not for what it is to empower that person to be more productive because he is actually more productive but you're giving them giving them that environment to be more productive you, and once that person becomes more productive you know you know colonel rato let, let me share an anecdote that's you know, how a country becomes you know, let me share an anecdote uh, you know pm modi was once asked uh, aren't you afraid of losing elections and his response was if i lose what's the worst that will happen to me i'll go back to my home and carry on with my life as it was before i became prime minister i am not afraid of it and it's it's a it's a mindset change so what is the mindset change that you've learned you know you for people know you you spent an uh, time in uniform you you are an olympic medalist 10 years as mp uh, being asked to go and fight an mla uh, mla election people would say uh, look how many of these ministers are being told to not contest as mla these are all demotions but there's some sort of team effort dynamic going on here how's it how does it feel I'm already living a life of bonuses. I've I've lived my career as a soldier. I've done counter insurgency insurgency operations. I've done what any soldier would ask for. I've fought for this country. I've killed for this country and I'm proud of it. Now, having done that, I then went on to win commonwealth medals, Asian games medals, Olympic medals. All of that was bonus for me. And now it's super bonus for me. it's time to give back to the country to be on the most powerful stage which is the platform which is a political platform everything in my life is a bonus what can i ask for i don't need anything remember uh, what abraham lincoln said ask not what the country can do for you but what you can do for the country i am in a position where i'm proud to be part of prime minister modi's team and i am trying to give my best i don't need anything from the country i want to give to the country we need people like that and prime minister is picking up such people who can give to the country and not take from the country okay colonel atur i know your time is short because i know you need to travel but i'm going to ask a couple of questions uh, the pm has spoken about a message that has gone globally today and you know there are betters out there not everybody wants india to succeed uh, they want india to be in trouble they want you to be told that you're not a democracy you don't have religious freedom you don't have press freedom you're all in a in, in a soup what is the message that's gone today you know india is in such a position we don't need to give an ear or any importance to naysayers there are lots and lots of people around the world uh, with vested interest who do not want our country to succeed they are uh, trying their level best giving uh, pumping in all sorts of funds to to somehow sabotage our growth we don't have to listen to all of that we have to be stronger than that we have to overcome that this is part of the game we cannot say don't do this this is part of the game if you want to play the game you got to fight it and win it despite whatever is happening and this is what india is doing india is ensuring that irrespective of what happens around the world our word is heard in the countries around and we are ensuring by making our citizens more powerful more empowered uh, we are we are ensuring the research the scientists the sports persons the army 
the every person in this country needs to become more powerful that's how india is going to become more powerful okay uh what is required we need an active opposition they have to keep you on your toes they have to, supposed to be sitting and be hypercritical and nagging you and chasing after you of everything that's how a democracy functions so what is their what is that they're getting wrong that it overall leaves a sour taste in the mouth that it it uh, that they're doing a duty but it almost seems like they're bashing india while they're doing it Yes, because uh, somehow they, instead of engaging with the government, they want to stop the government. They want to stop the progress of the country. They want to stop the schemes. They cannot do that. Absolutely, they cannot do that. And they've tried it. So they they try and stop stall the parliament. They try and uh, uh, not allow the state governments to work in uh, sync with the central government just to stall Prime Minister Modi's schemes. That's not going to work. people see through that you have to <coughs> opposition has to engage productively pro- proactively and then find faults and and air those speak about those faults in the schemes in the parliament or in the assemblies and give suggestions as to what needs to be improved so that the government then uh, ensures modifies the schemes and adds those points they have to highlight those points in the press they have to be specific but they have they absolutely vague they have no policy they have no vision and their perhaps only strategy is stall the government okay. which is not working okay. for them okay what what about the issues of oh there is there are there are communal tensions in this country and there's a north south divide the linguistic tensions you know what what has recently been said by a by a, 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 a you know an an air apparent in tamil nadu where where is this taking us <clears throat> all of these things are being instigated Uh, to win the elections, to to divide the community, divide the the society, and ensure a certain block votes for them. So uh, this is where Prime Minister Modi says that we need to have uh, one election for the entire country, so that all this rhetoric and all this nonsensical talks, wherein they are trying to instigate, remains limited to just those one month or one and a half month or whatever, and also. the governments are functioning for a larger duration of the year or all the five years so uh, yes a lot of uh, even in our democracy a lot of improvement needs to be done and who's going to do it it's we the elected members need to put our minds together rise above personal interests and in the interest of the nation take certain decisions okay colonel you called it bonus time but uh, as you well know your work uh, just begins uh, tonight uh, you are now elected to represent uh, your constituency which is jhotwara which you won as you mentioned by more than 50000 votes we wish you the best in that service for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon